guys, welcome back to our new series we're calling How Much Do They Make at the Humble Penny. Today we've got a really exciting guest. We've got Ocean, who's a music producer who we've come across as part of a cohort for a program we're going through on YouTube. Hello, Ocean. Hey, Ocean. Hey, what's good? What's good? Yeah, good to have you, man. Yeah, so absolutely. We've been really excited about this one. And for our audience watching, this is going to be a very unusual interview, but one we hope will offer them a lot of insight into, first of all, into music, but into you as an individual, what your journey's been like, what you do exactly, because even Mary and I, we're really excited to kind of learn a lot from you yeah. about what you do. Uh, and just for you to just give us a lot of insight into, you know, what's life really like for a music producer, as well as just talking about the money end, because many people will be very curious about what that looks like as well. So do you want to just start by just giving us a bit of a background, Ocean, on what exactly you do for a living? Just talk to us about that and for how long you've been doing it. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me as well. Um, I guess, like, the, 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 the daily life for me is kind of split between being a music producer and being a YouTuber at the same time. They kind of go both hand in hand. But like the music production side of things, a lot of it is me just coming to the studio every day, creating something like a instrumental or even just a melody. And then I'm either sending that off to other artists to add to it, other producers to do their thing as well, add to it. Or I'm actually working with an artist directly in the studio. I'll make the, the instrumental on the spot and then they'll come, they'll add their vocals, add their add their spice to it and turn it into a full song in the hopes that they'll release it and put it out. And then like the YouTube stuff, um, my YouTube channel is basically all about me making beats, tutorials a bit, but I'm, I've kind of moved away from it a little bit. And it's me just documenting the journey of literally just starting music production to like w where I am now and then hopefully in the future, working with bigger artists, working in bigger studios and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So how did you get into making beats? And were you inspired by somebody or by a few people? Mm -hmm. um, I kind of got into it in like a weird full circle kind of thing. So when I was really young as a teenager, I was heavily into music. Like I played in bands and stuff like that until about 15. And then one day my dad's like, nah, you need to get serious with your education. I like, you need to focus on your school. So that's when I like completely quit music, didn't do anything with music and I just focused on school. And um, this time, like this is so random, I really wanted to study medicine and wow. be a doctor. So I was like doing all that, trying to like get into uni, get into uni. Didn't get in the first time. So I took a gap year, tried again, didn't get in. So that's when I was kind of just like a, you call it like a midlife crisis, even though I was really yeah. young. And I was like, damn, what am I gonna do? I need to figure this out. And then I thought, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to just make money online and, and do that. So I kind of went down that path on how to make money online. Um, I started like drop shipping. I started doing Facebook ads for people. Um, I started like designing t-shirts, sending it online. And I did that for about three years whilst I was, I don't know if you heard of the term like a digital nomad, like living on your computer oh, yeah. and just, yeah. So I was doing that for like three or four years and then wow. Whilst I was doing that, I realized, oh, I really like martial arts. I want to be an MMA fighter. So then I decided to like move to an MMA gym. I was training like every day, twice a day, trying to become a fighter. And then really quickly, I just realized, nah, this is not the life for me. Like I as much as I love martial arts, I'm just not trying to get punched in the face like every day. I wasn't, I wasn't down for the grind. And then just during that time period, I had a lot of time to recover in between like, the times that you're training. A lot of times I was just by myself, not really doing much. And that's when like the full circle moment happened and I was like getting into music again, listening to loads of music. And I thought to myself, you know what? I think I could probably do this if I just put like my time into it. I think I can actually get good. So I'd literally just made a decision on the spot. It was like January, 2016. It was a new year's resolution. I sat there, I calculated it, like, if I do 10 years of consistent work in music production, then, like, I can actually hopefully make it come true and be a music producer. So I just literally decided then and there I'm going to be a music producer, and I've just been doing that ever since now. Wow. 
So, oh my God, that's, there's so much you've said there. Yeah, a lot packed into that. So hang on. So 2016, you've been, you started doing this stuff. For those of you watching who don't know, like Ocean's got an incredible YouTube channel. We're going to yeah. put details for you guys to go and check it out. You've got more than 300,000 subscribers. So between 2016 and when we're making this video, 2021, you've amassed that many followers and you know you're having that much impact with what yeah. you're doing which is just absolutely incredible exactly testament to your talent basically yeah i mean that's just really really yeah, incredible yeah, yeah. when we looked at your channel mary and i have got to say like you know where we love music but we love different kinds of music and we hadn't really come across like we noticed you make beats for drill music and stuff like that so we just wanted to know from you first of all for a lot of people watching they might not even know what on earth drill music is so do you want to just tell us what is drill music and just explain to our audience like why has this become a big thing for i guess maybe younger people or maybe not just you know give us a bit of background around drill music yeah i'd say drill music it really got popular in chicago first in in the u.s um Basically, it's just like a subgenre offshoot of hip hop. It's like a mixture of trap, but a bit darker. And the way how it bounces is just a little bit different. Um, but then I'd say around like 2015, 2016, it started to get popular in England and it just started taking off. And I think now, years later, it's becoming like the, the sound of the UK. Like it's becoming very commercial. It's becoming like, I guess they call it urban. So it's like the most popular urban genre in the UK at the moment. The reason why it's popular, I think it's just a lot to do with the culture of, of today, you know, like people, the way that people express themselves on drill is just kind of what makes it maybe like the in thing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have a sample? Like I said, I know you've got millions of views on some of your music on YouTube. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll pull up a drill beat and then like I'll explain like what makes it drill, I guess. Yeah. Okay, go on then. Let's see. This is exciting. <laughs> so I'd say like what makes that a drill beat is the if you can hear the bass line, it's got a lot of glides. We call it slides or glides, where it's like, vroom, 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 like it's all over the place there. And then with the, this hi hat or the counter snare, it's like, ch -ch 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 -ch. that's like the typical drill pattern. So I guess that's what's characteristic about a drill beat. So talk to us about the process of making a beat and how the beat might then end up as something that you might get paid. Yeah, get for. paid for, yeah. So my process of making a beat usually, I like to start with a melody. So I might just sit there. Maybe I have an idea in my head, maybe not. If I don't, I just like play around until I come across an idea or like a foundation that I can build from. And I just do it in layers. So it might just start with a piano. Then I'll turn that piano into like a very electronic sound, like a something weird maybe i don't know like a, another sound that's not the same as a piano and then i'll just keep adding layers and layers until i think it's full enough then once i've got the melody down then i just put the drums on just to give it that rhythm and that bounce um then once that's done i could structure it out to where an artist could rap or sing over it so it's got like a chorus a verse chorus and then i guess there's like many many different lanes you can take as a music producer um, one of the ways you can go about it is you want, they call it placements. So basically if someone, let's say a famous artist, right? let's say Burner Boy, Burner Boy hears my beat, he records a song on it and he decides to release it, then we'll call that a placement and we'll say that we've produced for Burner Boy and then you'd get paid maybe up front for the beat and then on the back end you get paid like royalties and this kind of stuff. Um, Another route is to literally just sell beats online. So once you have your beat, you just put it up for sale on your website and you just license it to independent artists. So maybe people who are not, who haven't got like massive audiences, but they're still upcoming and they can't afford to pay two, three thousand for a beat. 
you sell them a license of let's say 30 to 50 dollars for x amount of streams or x amount of plays and as a music producer you just want to go for volume there try and lease that beat as many times as possible to build up that income or if you're a producer and you want to be the artist yourself you could just release that instrumental straight on spotify and collect streaming royalties from that so there's like many different lanes you can go down Awesome. We're going to talk more about money because the money bit is so important and we want to really just demystify money, which is part of why we're doing this series, really, just to get us being more comfortable talking about money. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you was like, we, I've watched your channel now for you know a, a few days and a few weeks since I've, we've gotten to know you. And I've been thinking to myself, there's something about watching you on screen that's really, you seem really calm and really um not on the the pressure that a lot of you know talented influential people have online you've got lots of hundreds of you know thousands of followers mm -hmm. across instagram across youtube yeah how do you stay level-headed mm -hmm. you know to still create what you create while still obviously being you know in in it out there in terms of being so influential when people look up to you in terms of what you do how do you actually stay level-headed to, to make the work still completely relevant and um, relatable to people? Hmm, that's a good question. I, I say it's like a few things. One is like, I still don't think of myself as like a, I don't know, like a somebody who's made it and has like a big head or something like. I still got so much goals to accomplish. And so because I'm not there, I'm just like, I still feel honestly, like I still wake up and feel like I'm a beginner. Like I'm still just learning and trying to figure things out. So I don't really feel like I'm, like this big person who, who has like thousands of followers and loads of people watching me. I just feel like I'm someone just starting, just getting into the game still. I, d I don't know if you guys feel this as well, but sometimes I kind of forget that I'm actually putting my videos out there on the internet and people are seeing it. To me, it's literally like, I have my camera, I'm creating my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I record it, edit it, put it out and I'm onto the next yeah. thing. And I completely forget like, oh, somebody's yeah. actually watching this or. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, it, it's the same with us because we're thinking about, you know, once we're recording, we're already moving on to the next one. Mm. And so that's what we're thinking about. I think it's only when we get, we hear somebody say, like yeah. somebody who we haven't spoken to in years, like, I saw you on YouTube. We're like, ah, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or people share it on like Instagram or they take a screenshot and, yeah. and share it. Yeah. Then there's that, you kind of, you're reminded again that actually there are lots of people who are watching this stuff potentially and from anywhere in the world as well. Yeah. So that's exactly it. You definitely do come across like down to earth um, in all your videos, so which is great. Um, so can you tell us what a typical day in the life um, of a music producer is like? Yeah, I think I think for me it might be different, like a little bit unique just because I do, like YouTube takes a lot of the time as well. So usually I wake up really early in the morning. Um, I just, I literally just like wake up, leave the house, come to the studio, and then before I start making a beat, I, I like to like just practice my instruments. Like I'm still trying to learn the guitar and the piano. So I practice the guitar for a while, practice the piano for a while. Then um, if I've got something specific to do, like maybe I need to send a specific artist a pack of beats, then I'll get to that. Um, if I've got nothing on the agenda like that, then literally I'll just create and I'll try and have some days it's easier said than done, but I'll try and like not have any expectations and just allow it to flow, making a beat and filming at the same time, making sure that everything's all good there. Then as soon as I finish recording, I get down to the edit. Um, I usually edit it with my videographer as well. We kind of do it like half and half. We'll edit that straight away. And sometimes I might drop the video that night. Sometimes I might wait a few days, but that process there is gonna take me all day from like filming and editing. And then by the time that's finished, it's like eight or nine. Then I'll go home and just like chill and just repeat the next day, really. Ah, so so you're actually filming stuff away from home? Do you have a studio somewhere else where, you, where you're usually creating stuff? Yeah, so at the, now, now, this is just recently as well, maybe like the last two months, I've moved all my, all my studio stuff into an actual studio because I wanted to like separate work and personal life because when I did have it in my house I just felt like I was less productive and I'd get I don't know about you guys but I'd get this feeling maybe you get it too where it's like you've worked now it's time to chill but you feel guilty for chilling because work is still kind of close by 
so you feel like you should be working and I, I just kept on getting that feeling and I hated it so I was just like nah I need to I need to like cut this straight down the middle work personal life no we can we can completely relate 100% we're, in fact we're still trying to work it out for us really yeah trying to separate work from you know family life and chilling and stuff like that because oftentimes we'll find that we're still switched on just thinking just listening to you so and i'm sure people will agree with me in saying that you seem really focused as an mm -hmm. individual which is really really interesting to hear i'd love to know though from from your own words what three things would you say whether it's habits or you know um, attributes to yourself specifically would you say make you a success at what you do today um i'd say the main one it's nothing spicy. It's honestly just consistency. But really and truly, like when it comes down to it, it's just th these small things that you do every single day. Over time, it, it's like it just, it, it, I don't know, compounds, it builds into something. Like it might not seem like much on the day. You might think, I don't know, an hour of guitar today, you miss it today, it's probably not going to be a big problem that day. But if you do that, if you continue to miss your hour guitar over three years, then when you look back at three years, you're gonna realize, damn, like you didn't progress as much as you want. But if you put in that time just every single day, just a little bit, just keep building it, building it, building it. Over three years, you look back, you're gonna be like, wow, I made a lot of progress. And I kind of try and keep that mentality with everything, with uploading YouTube videos, with practicing my instruments, with, you know, just making beats as much as possible. You, you kind of need discipline to stay consistent. It kind of works hand in hand. The people who are achieving a lot in their lives, is this mm -hmm. almost this relentless, relentless discipline yes. and almost kind of focus on their craft mm -hmm. for them to get, to consistently get results. Exactly, because a lot of people have vision, they have long-term goals, but it's the ability to break that down into smaller daily and weekly tasks, which, like you said, re requires consistency and discipline. That's mm -hmm. what makes you a success. That's what makes mm -hmm. you great. You know, sometimes you might you might be so disciplined, you might have an off day, and that's okay too, like, you're okay. human, in it. You might just break down and have to take time to, to recover, then get back yeah. on it again. Everything about what you do sounds really exciting, but what do you love most about what you do? That's really tough, you know, because I love everything. Like, I love all the, the all the different parts and depending on each... Honestly, like, depending on the day, I might wake up and be like, you know what, I really love making only melodies. That's what I want to do. And then the next week I change my mind, like, ah, oh, man, I'm so burnt out and bored of melodies. All I want to do is make TikTok videos and remixes. I don't know if you know, there's a stat out there that shows 85% of people globally, globally, global workforce are disengaged or hate their jobs. So to hear you, like not only say you love what you do, but you love every aspect of it, it's just so rare. Yeah. Like literally, that's just so, so rare. Because oftentimes people like, I love what we do, mm -hmm. but there are bits that I just, I just, I just don't like doing it. <laughs> like I hate, I hate admin. Like <laughs> I'm sure that's the same for you. <laughs> I hate my admin work because some things just take me so long, and yeah. I just get so frustrated. I just yeah. want. I'm like, I need help. I need someone else to help me just do it. So every 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 career has challenging aspects to it. What would you say for what you do is probably your most the most challenging thing that you do? It's more of the side of getting getting out there, the the brand side, the marketing side. Um, because there's only so much that's in my control. Like I can control me improving at my beats and I can control my habits, but then it's, I, I can in a way like control how many beats am I sending out every week? How many, how many outreaches am I doing to artists? But then at the end of the day, it's kind of still up to the artist if they want to hop on my beat. And then that's just half the battle. Are they going to release it? Um, is it going to end up on an album? Those kind of things are a bit more out of my control. But at the same time, I think that also gets easier. That's kind of like a snowball effect. The more cuts you have with an artist, the more eyes that are on you. Like other artists are gonna be like, oh, I heard you produce for this guy. I kind of want that sound, let me come to you. And it, it's kind of like that. So it, it grows exponentially, but I still see myself in the, in the beginning as that. So it's just a bit more difficult for me to like 
get my beat in the hands of the bigger artists, I guess. How much um, per month or per annum do you make as a music producer? And from what sources? So, i.e., how do you monetize your craft? Okay, so for me, um, I have like three main revenue sources, three revenue streams, um, and they're mainly related to YouTube. So my first income stream is YouTube, just like, you know, the typical AdSense when you get paid from YouTube for your videos. Um, I make between like four to five US, four to five K USD, thousand USD um, per month. That kind of goes up and down depending on like how your views are for the month. So sometimes it spikes up to like, it could spike up to seven. Sometimes it might drop down to like four, but I'd say like average four to five. Um, and then my, my biggest stream of revenue is my digital products on my website. So I sell sound kits, drum kits, sound packs, very specific to music producers, but basically they're just sounds that they can buy that they can use to make their own beats and things that will help them create their own beats and just make that creative process a bit easier. I've got maybe like 20 or so products on there now. I've, I've got like a few more releasing this year and that, that is all over the place as well, but like it ranges between like eight thousand to ten thousand per month. On as it goes into like quarter three, that's when it gets a lot higher. Or if I do a product, dollars or pounds. Yeah, everything's in dollars because mo most of my audience is US, so I just keep it in dollars. Wow. Um, um, if I do a product launch, it will go up, but average eight to ten, and then my third. A uh, big revenue stream is brand deals or like videos for, for brands. There are some really good ones that I do from time to time. Uh, my fee is increasing like all the time, but let's say if I do one a month, it could be like three to 5K. Um, so if we average that out, that could be like 20K in a month. Yeah. It's really good. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. I want us to just dive into that a little bit, especially the middle income stream, the products you've got. So are those products that you create once and then the income is more passive? Yeah, so that, that side is all passive income. I create the product up front. That'll take me, you know, a day to a week, maybe a bit longer, depending on what it is. But then once I release it, I don't have to ever touch it again. It's just recurring in the background. So that's all passive. So that's so interesting for yeah. our audience specifically, because yeah. like, um, so what you're saying there is, is the ad revenue from YouTube is semi-passive because mm -hmm. obviously you, you're still making money from old content. Yes. Yeah. And as well as new content, you have to keep mm -hmm. feeding the machine as it were for that mm -hmm. to make money. So it's semi-passive. But the middle piece, that like eight to 10 K per month is purely passive. You just do the work once and it's yeah. really just, you know, you know, you're just you're just getting paid for doing that. And obviously then the brand deals you do is completely active revenue because you have to do the work to get paid. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. you know, literally for someone who says they're a beginner, like yeah. Ocean, that's incredible. Like, I've got I've got to say, I mean, that's that's awesome. That is awesome because that's what we talk about all the time, creating your own products and making mm -hmm. passive income. So you're pretty much doing that and you have kind of diversified income, which is great. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the kind of maximum income potential for someone who's a music producer like yeah how far could this go yeah. <laughs> mm, this is this can go infinite honestly because like there's no there's no ceiling like on I, if i think about it for myself i don't feel like i've even maximized not only you know like my products and how much i could sell but also just the, the push behind it. Like I don't really promote my products in my videos that much to give it that big, to give it even a bigger push or like going after more brand deals. So I have even more, you know, I feel like I'm probably operating at like 30%. So like the ceiling is, is huge. There's so much you could do. And this, I'm very like, very, uh, what do you call it? Like YouTube internet centric. If I was to be more industry, that's like another stream of revenue right there. So do you actually have any plans on increasing your level of income? And if so, um, what do you plan to do differently? Like you spoke about, you know, industry, is that something that you maybe plan to do in the future? Yeah, so I think for me, a, bi a big thing for me is ownership. Like it's cool doing the brand deals and everything, but that's not the long-term play. 
I'd rather build something for myself. I do plan on dropping some more digital products. Um, I'm going to be dropping like a, a plugin, which is like very, again, like very music producer centric. Um, I would like to do a course in the future as well. Because I do get a lot of inquiries on like, can you give me one-on-one -on -one lesson? Can you give me a one-on-one -on -one lesson? I do want to release like a clothing brand as well because wow. I'm just big into fashion. <laughs> but aside, aside from like that, I do, my plan this year is to um, try and get as many placements as possible. And that's just like a whole another revenue stream there. By the sounds of it, just listening to you, making if you're making $20,000 a month, by the sounds of it, you've got potential down the line to be making seven figures from doing what you're doing per annum. Would you say that's a fair thing to say? People who are not even in the industry, but just doing their thing online, doing it in their own way, making their own lane, are doing it. They're making like seven figures a year. It's becoming a thing now. So I think like it can only, it's now that they've done it, it shows what's really possible for everyone. Just because I know people are going to be thinking it, how old are you, Asian? Just to kind of give some perspective. I'm 25. You're 25. Wow. Wow. So you, wow. That's, wow. That's incredible. So you are, you're 25. You're making on average about $20,000 a month yeah. doing it from your home slash your own studio, doing what you love mm -hmm. and also having like the potential for it to just keep growing. You're not having to last, ask anyone for a promotion or anything like that. Like that's just, that just blows my mind. Like we talk yes. a lot about making an income online and so mm -hmm. on. Um, and I know there's a lot said about this on the internet, but we really want to get people to focus on the things that work. To what extent, like, do you think people should be using the internet as a platform for growing their wealth, like, and kind of earning their income? Just speak to people about this candidly, given your kind of journey so far. Man, the internet makes everything possible because let's say 10 years ago, as a music producer, the only way you're really gonna make money is if you're getting placements, if you're working with big artists. And that was very, very hard to do because if you're, I don't wanna say like a nobody, but if you didn't have a name, to get access into those kind of rooms is very difficult. Like you have to know someone who knows someone, who knows someone, who knows someone. So like things are just gotta work in alignment for you. But with the internet, you kind of just, you don't have to play that game. You can just play your own game, be in your own lane. Yeah, we 100% agree. And it's yeah. just, it's good for us to hear it from somebody else mm -hmm. and for our audience to hear it from somebody else. Because mm -hmm. often they're hearing it from us. It's just for them to hear it from you. Yeah. That should be in your mid twenties as well. Like, exactly. wow, that's just. It's super impressive. What three top pieces of advice would you give to somebody who might want to become a music producer and make the same level of income as you or potentially more? Forget about the money. Um, that will come in time. The first thing I would focus on is just mastering the craft and just loving the process, loving what you're doing. I'd say like when I first started making, making music and making beats, I knew that in the beginning it was going to be tough. My beats are going to be rubbish. Everything is just not going to really work out the way I want it to. But if I just make beats every day, three hours every single day, just put that time in and master the craft, you look back over a year, you're going to be way, way ahead than where you was before. And I think like that, that's crucial in the beginning. Like you just want to give yourself a good foundation. That's incredible. Listen, we're just going to just um, switch gears because this is a personal finance channel. And I'm sure people are going to be super keen to know what, how would you describe your relationship with money? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'd say I, I was extremely frugal before. Like when I was young, I, I was, I had a very bad relationship with money because I didn't have much of it. So anytime I got it, it's like, I just want to hold on to this as much as possible until I really need to spend it. But then as I got older, I realized, nah, you need to actually be okay with investing in something that can return you, you know, value, whether that's buying more equipment, spending money on ads or whatever. So now as I've gotten older, I'm very more like, if I find, if I know it's gonna bring me value or make my life easier, then I will do it. Um, with like my personal finances, I'm a bit all over the place at the moment, you know. <laughs> I mean, just to ask you, do you do any form of budgeting or anything like that? Or do you almost, 
mentally know, do you know what? This is the maximum I'm willing to spend on in a month kind of thing. And, yeah. mm-hmm. in, um, and, and that's um, it. Pretty much it's all in my head at the moment. I used to have this app on my phone where I would record in every single thing I spent. Um, I don't really do that anymore. I do that for like the, the business stuff. But in terms of like my own personal money, it's all just mental and I just keep mental track of like how much I'm spending on certain things. So what do you think you learn um, about money from your parents growing up? <sighs> Not great habits, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, my, if my mum watching this, she ain't gonna be too happy, but yeah. like, <laughs> I wouldn't say like, they were, they were, my parents were like huge big spenders or anything like that. But I was taught like you need to, you have to save, you have to put money aside. You can't just like get money and spend money, even though like it comes around, goes around. You can't just like bang, bang. It needs to be sensible. Really think about, I think like my dad as well, is like really think about what you're spending your money on. Watching you on your channel on YouTube, I I noticed a really strong bond between you and your brother, your younger brother. Super sweet, yeah. So I wanted to just just ask you like, how important is family life to you, for example? Um, Because it's not often you see siblings kind of relating in the way that you relate with your brother. I think with me and my brother, we've always been close because it's just the two of us. Even though we have like somewhat of a big age difference. To be honest, I just see him as, I don't know if it's like, I, I see him like kind of like my age in a way. I think family has become more important as I've gotten older because I say from like the age of 19 to let's say like 23, 24, I was just all over the place. I was moving here and there and everywhere. And I, I wasn't at home. I probably saw my, my family like once or twice a year for a certain period of time. And especially with my brother, you know, cause I feel like I missed out on some of his his teenage years a bit because I wasn't there all the time. So now I kind of just want to catch up and make up for it a bit more, you know. So what do you spend most of your money on per month? And what do you do to treat yourself? What do you spend money on to treat yourself as well? So I guess um, I spend a lot of money on, but this is all like company expense, business expense. I spend a lot of money on reinvesting back into the actual music. What I spend money on the most is probably the split between well, it's definitely rent, but then after rent, because London is expensive, yeah. a- after rent, um, probably like food, maybe. I do eat out quite a bit. <laughs> I cook a lot, maybe two weeks, I'm cooking every meal. The next two weeks, I'm eating out. Yeah. So it balances. Right. Yeah, 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 we hear um, that. <laughs> every now and again, it's not every single month, maybe like every three months, I'll spend a lot on clothes. Because I'm, j- I personally just, I'm really into my fashion. And then my next biggest expense after that is the gym. This, this is bougie. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I decided on. that I really wanted to go to a nice gym, um, especially because it's like super close to the studio as well. Yeah. It's locked down now, so I can't go. But that, that, that gym there is like perfect because it's just like right around the corner. I can like bang out the gym, have a shower, come to the studio do that really quickly. It's definitely not a necessary expense. I could go to a a way cheaper gym, but I just love this gym, so. So can you think about a specific money mistake growing up? Because you've got all these bits in your life where you're a digital nomad and you know, you're traveling, you're doing all kinds of things. Any money mistakes that you can think of that really stick out to you? And you kind of think to yourself, gosh, you know. (laughs) Okay, so when when I was like doing the whole digital nomad thing, I wasn't really clued up about like business expenses and stuff. So I guess like when you have a company, when you make money through the company, you can expense things that you're using for your company. And I know I didn't do that. I was just doing it all through my personal money. So like I would spend, even though it was for the business, I'll do it all through my personal side. And so that didn't really make sense. Like I lost out on quite a lot. So now I make sure like, like anything I do for the business is a business expense. Right, Ocean, we could not leave you without asking you this, right? So you mentioned you're a digital nomad and so many people, in fact, everyone we ask, why do you want to be financially independent? Always says, I want to travel the world. I want to just head out there and see the world. Yeah. Like you've done it and you're only 25. So we wanted to ask you what, country would you say you enjoyed going to the most? It could be more than one, but just just give us a bit of flavour around that for you specifically. 
It's a tough one. It's a really tough one because I, I got to see like so many different places. I say like my first love is probably always going to be Thailand because it was the first place that I left home and I moved to and I spent like almost a year there. And it's like where I learned martial arts, where I, I don't know, just like really, where I really found my legs to become like a proper adult. And the food there is like it's 10 out of 10. I miss it. I miss the food there. I think about it quite a lot. <laughs> So I'd say like Thailand for sure. I really enjoyed my time in in Colombia. I, I want to spend like more time there. Um, I really liked Spain as well. I lived there for, if I added up all my time, like just over a year as well. And uh, I like the lifestyle in comparison to England because not, not to knock England, but you know here it's more about let's grind, let's work and let's, let's achieve this and... But in Spain, it's like the skies are usually blue. It's it's like, yeah. what are you doing today? Let's go chill with friends. Let's just go grab a beer. Let's go talk in the middle of the road. And that's like more like the culture. It's a bit more relaxed. I really appreciate that. I say my wild card is Serbia. Because wow. Serbia? I'm not going to lie here. When I was thinking about going there, I thought, oh, it might be a bit racist. Like, yeah. But then I went there and as I landed, I felt a bit anxious because I wasn't seeing like, any black people and I thought like, nah, why did I come here? Mm -hmm. And you were solo as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I was by myself. Wow. I was by myself. And um, when I got there, the locals were very friendly. They would just stop and talk to you on the road and they see, you know, I stand, I stick out because I got dreads and I'm a black guy. So they want to know like, why am I here? Like, what do you know? <laughs> let, me, let me tell you about Serbia. Let me invite you here, there and everywhere. And that was really nice. That was a cool experience. So that's like my wild card. I have to ask you this question. Like, do you have to know a musical instrument to be a good music producer? You don't. Um, it definitely does help and it does make things maybe a bit easier. But you don't. There's honestly that there's no rules to making music. You can just figure it out and play as Play as you go along and try and hear it out, hear what sounds good. Um, but yeah, it, it, it can help. I, I, I think nowadays as well, because there's so many tools when you're making beats, um, there's so many tools out there for people who maybe don't know music theory or don't have a good understanding of like how to play an instrument. It makes it easier for you to create without that knowledge anyway. So you'll be fine. So imagine now, yeah, you're in your 20s and it sounds to me, like, it's more probable that someone in their 20s can go into beat making. You know, Mary and I, we're in our mid-30s. We say mid-30s. We're kind of, you know, we're in our 30s, right? And can anyone, even in their 30s or even in their 40s or even beyond that, can they go into beat making, like, seriously, and, and potentially even turn into a career? Is that even a possibility for them, do you think? Nah, they're too odd. <laughs> nah, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Nah, of course, I think I don't think there's... I honestly don't think, like, there's any rules. You, There's producers out there who are, like, 14 and 15 and making amazing beats and, and doing their thing. And then there's, on the other spectrum, guys who are in, like, their 50s and 60s who are still, like, very relevant today and still making a huge impact. I guess, to wrap this up, just thinking about where you're at now mm -hmm. you're in a you're at a really good place you know you're still growing you're still creating and you're right at the beginning of your own mind as well in terms of like your money journey in many ways there's so much more you can create i guess if we had to ask you what would you say is your ultimate financial goal like what's the big dream you've got when you think about do you know what long term 10 years down the line this is kind of what i'm working towards or kind of beyond that what would you say that is financially i'm like super free i never have to worry about money like if i decide to wake up and go across the world i can do it and not have to think twice about it being a money problem i don't want i'm not, i don't really have dreams of being like a billionaire or anything like that i do would i would like to become a millionaire for sure but no, I don't need like a billion on all this kind of stuff. That is awesome. I think I, after this call, I actually want to try and start making some beats, you know, just for fun. <laughs> Can, is, is, do you recommend garage bands like for a beginner? <laughs> when do you start? Like, <laughs> I, actually, I'm not joking. I actually want to get into, I want to make some beats. <laughs> yeah, garage, garage band is decent. That's a good place to go. 
Cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, look, Ocean, thank you so much for thank joining us today. So How can people reach out to you? If people want to connect with you, should they head over to your YouTube channel? Should they connect on Instagram? Just let people know. Yeah, um, you can find me on YouTube. My channel name is Ocean. Maybe you type in like Ocean Producer, I should pop up. Um, on Instagram, I'm at Prod by Ocean. Um, I'm on Twitter as well, at Prod by Ocean. Yeah, that's the best way to find me. Awesome. awesome guys check him out check out his music and you know he makes amazing beats mm -hmm. and yeah just if you want some inspiration definitely head over to his channel yep. thank you thank you so, so much, much for watching today guys if you've not caught the rest of the series we're going to put links to them below go and watch the rest of the how much do they make series check them out they've been incredible interviews so far thank you so much as ever for watching thank don't you. forget to hit the likes yeah. the shares the subscribe support the humble penny show us some love here for the work we're putting into these interviews. As ever guys, in all things, be, be thankful, thankful and seek joy. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye.